So I was looking down my list of things to do in videos and I had the Terrago Palatine Fossa there and I thought that'll be an easy one, I'll do that. And then I started looking at the Terrago Palatine Fossa and I remembered how difficult it is to explain to other people where it is, which also explains why it's difficult for the learner to understand where the Terrago Palatine Fossa is. But that's what we'll do and we'll try and do it briefly. First of all, I will just get straight in there and point at it and try to show you where it is. Then we'll look at the nearby bones so you have a better understanding of where it really is. And then we will look at the fissures, the canals, the foramina, that is the bony holes that link that fossa to other nearby spaces. And by doing that, we'll talk about the things that go through those bony holes. And then you will have a good understanding of not only where it is, but also how it connects to other spaces. But also by that point, what is in the Terrago Palatine fossa. Terrago palatine fossa also gets called the sphenopalatine fossa. So we've got some words here. We've got sphenoid, we've got palate, palatine, we've got pterygoid, gives us some clues, and we're deep in the face in here. And a fossa is like, it's a depression, right? So a foramen is a, is a hole, uh, a fossa is a depression. So we've got to imagine kind of that sort of space deep in the face up there. So instead of using you, I'm going to use, um, I'm not saying your skull isn't high quality, but I'm gonna use a high quality skull. We're gonna take the mandible off, because that will help. Because we really are going very deep into the face. Um, and you see where we are, there's the maxilla. There's the zygomatic arch. We've got to get in and under there. We've got to stick our pipe cleaner up there. Now we have to be a little bit careful here because the, there's a fissure leading to the pterygopalatine fossa and the fissure is not the fossa. The fissure is like the groove that leads to it. So kind of where, where the tip of my Pipe cleaner is going. That's where the pterygopalatine fossa is. That's why it's so difficult to get to grips with exactly where it is. So if I take the pipe cleaner out, you actually get a better sense. You can see, and that's the, one of the problems is by pointing at it, you, you obscure it, you hide it, you cover it. Um, and the space in there is kind of just big enough for the structures that are in there. Remember, bones form with the soft tissues, so the soft tissues describe the shapes of the bone and so on. But that in there, that's the pterygopalatine fossa. Okay, we need to look at this from some other angles to better understand it, because you're not here with me with this skull. Okay, so here's the maxilla, so the upper jaw, Maxilla, that bone there. Um, down here, this is the sphenoid bone. And the sphenoid bone is a single central bone. And these rather conspicuous plates here are part of the sphenoid bone. And they look a little bit like wings. Now, pterygoid, so pteri refers to wing, oid refers to shaped. So these are the pterygoid plates, the medial and lateral pterygoid plates of the sphenoid bone. They are wing-shaped plates of bone. And they have a number of functions, you know, things attach here. Um, so this is sphenoid bone. And this is maxilla. And it's up in there that we find the pterygopalatine fossa. So the pterygopalatine fossa then is between the maxilla and the sphenoid bone, but there's a little bit more to the story. So if this is the maxilla, this is also the maxilla. So the bones of the roof of the mouth, the hard palate, that is maxilla. But at the posterior edge of the maxilla, we have two bones here called the palatine bones. And they actually, so they form the posterior parts, the posterior edges of uh, the hard palate, but they actually extend long processes up here. Now this is the nasal cavity. Look, there it is, nasal cavity. 
So the palatine bones are also involved. Let's have a look at this on a painted skull, um, which might help a little bit, but we're looking at the same things again. So in purple here, we have the maxilla. And if I tilt this up, you can see that this red bone here, this is that very central bone of the sphenoid bone, and you can see these pterygoid plates, and you can see one of the muscles that takes advantage of those pterygoid plates to attach to. Now, this red here and here, these are the palatine bones. This is the posterior edge of the maxilla, the posterior edge of the hard palate there. Okay, so we've got our major players. Um, now, that fissure that I talked about running up here is between the maxilla and between the sphenoid bone. This is the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone. And at the top of the fissure is the pterygopalatine fossa. Right, what spaces have we got nearby? Well, here's the orbit. That's really close by. Here's the nasal cavity. That's really close by. Up here, this is the top of the pharynx. This would be the nasopharynx up here. And here's the oral cavity. Remember that if we take off the skull cap in here, we've got the cranial cavity. Um, and that's the middle cranial fossa there. So that spot there, the pterygopalatine fossa, is right between all of these major spaces, which is what might make it interested if you're interested in that sort of thing. Does it connect to any of those spaces? And if so, how? Yes, it does. Um, the easiest one is the orbit. So in the orbit, there are two fissures. There's a superior orbital fissure which links the orbit with the cranial cavity. Through there. But then there's an inferior orbital fissure which links the orbit with this region of the face. The superior end of the pterygopalatine fossa communicates really nicely with the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. So through there pass blood vessels, uh, the infraorbital artery and vein, and also um, branches of the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve, such as the, the zygomatic branch. Also, talking about the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve, um, there is a foramen called foramen rotundum that passes from the cranial cavity out through the skull, and guess where it goes? That's right. It pops out in the pterygopalatine fossa. So uh, the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve passes into the face through foramen rotundum and into the pterygopalatine fossa. So that's a hole in its posterior wall. Now, nearby, there are two other holes. Um, so also in the posterior wall, you'll, f <laughs> you'll find, if you're lucky, you'll find the um, pterygoid canal or the, uh, the vidian canal. Uh, and it's a tiny little hole, tiny little crack also connecting those two spaces. And the pterygoid canal has something in it called the nerve of the pterygoid canal, which is a collection of sympathetic and parasympathetic autonomic nerves, which are passing from um, the cranial cavity to the pterygopalatine fossa. In the pterygopalatine fossa, we find the pterygopalatine ganglion, one of the four parasympathetic ganglia of the head, which I've talked about elsewhere. But um, right here, we find the internal carotid artery that's surrounded by sympathetic nerves. They jump through the pterygoid um, canal, for example, to get to this point. The parasympathetic fibers come from the facial nerve. Speaking of things that we're not gonna see, there's also a pterygovaginal canal. I know, funny set of words to find in the head, um, but again, it relates to some bones. And also gets called the pharyngeal canal, which might make the words more sensible and easy to remember. I don't know. Also links the pterygoid 
of the pterygopalatine fossa to the superior part of the nasopharynx, so up here. So I don't know if you can imagine it, but it's, it's again, it's a small hole, a small canal running from the pterygopalatine fossa through these bony bits to pop out here. So that's carrying uh, the pharyngeal branch of the maxillary nerve and the pharyngeal branch of the maxillary artery. You're more likely to see this on CT images when your anatomy is really good than you are on um, yeah, a real skull, let alone a plastic skull. Uh, sphenopalatine foramen. Now, this is something we can, I don't know if you can see, we can just about see it in there. So the pterygopalatine fossa is here. If I push the pipe cleaner up, it goes up into the orbit. But if I push it medially, there's a nice little hole in there and we'll see that in the nasal cavity. So there's a medial, there's a hole in the medial wall of the pterygopalatine fossa that links it to the nasal cavity. Now, the maxillary artery, the deep artery of the face, which pretty much this pipe cleaner is representing, that's where the maxillary artery ends. Its final branch passes through there as the sphenopalatine artery. Nerves are also passing through there to the nasal cavity, so we have uh, a couple of nasal nerves and the nasopalatine nerve. So that's a route to the nasal cavity. So as I remove this pipe cleaner, you should be able to see that hole, the sphenopalatine foramen, that dark hole, there it is. Almost done, honest, uh, but another canal that you can't really see from the pterygopalatine fossa, there is also a palatine canal that runs to the greater and lesser palatine canals. Now think palatine, okay, we're going to the palate. And yes, that's what we can see opening on the palate here. These holes are the greater and lesser palatine foramina. So there is a connection between those bony openings and the pterygopalatine fossa, and through those canals past the nerves of the same names, the greater and lesser palatine nerves, um, to get to these points. Okay, given all that detail, let's pull back a little bit. Now, what do we know? Um, what lies within the pterygopalatine fossa? We can break this down a lot more simply. So we've seen the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve is in there. I've said that the pterygopalatine ganglion is in here. Um, and we saw that the maxillary artery ends there. And there are also some veins in here, but the veins of the face tend to be more variable than the arteries, but there are a number of links with the pterygoid venous plexus and what have you going on here. But there we go, that's the anatomy of the pterygopalatine fossa. And if you want to know more, well, you could watch my video about the pterygopalatine ganglion to understand a bit more about the nerves. I've done a lot of videos about this region, but also, become a radiologist, look at this area using CT images alongside a really good understanding of anatomy, and then you can see those bony canals quite nicely because bone looks good on CT, or become a surgeon, specialize this in this area, and you will explore this area through microsurgery. Honestly, it's that sort of level of detail, but you've got an idea now of what's there, um, where it is, what goes through it, how it links to other spaces and that sort of thing, all right? Well done, good luck. See you next time.